My name is Helen. And I'm Bill. I'm, I'm Dennis Crook. I'm on the Energy Efficient Homes team and we're uh, coming here today to uh, do an energy audit and we're giving everybody a feel of what this is like and we really appreciate you two helping us today and uh, going through this so it will help others too at, at the same time. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is um, uh, in the interview, like you were talking about a little prior to coming, is trying to figure out some of the obvious trouble spots you have in the house. You said like the kitchen being cold and right. different other areas. You said you found like the basement door area. I guess it's a stone foundation area where cold's coming in. And looking at different things throughout the house, we'll be going around and doing a visual inspection. Um, where we can, if we, it's just a little thing, we can like take a light cover socket off so we can see test for insulation or other things. So I, I, I'm looking for the cold and hot spots. I'm looking for things that I've seen through the last 40 years of building that uh, you know, just kind of yell out at me, I have a problem here. <laughs> and with that, uh, I reduce the <clears throat> places the air comes in and also uh, places that uh, need, may need insulation or uh, like vapor barriers and wind barriers. And actually places that you do need air coming in uh, to help keep ventilation proper. So that's some of the things that we're going to be looking at. And uh, so the first things you mentioned was the kitchen is a big trouble spot, right? Yes, and right under under the sink there is an old door. Uh, it's just a plain wooden door, and not even it covers all the space around it. So cold air goes into the cellar. Okay, there. That's the only place we're aware of that's open to the elements. Okay. But I think the kitchen being cold is more than just that. Mm -hmm. um, the kitchen is part of an addition that we put on about four years ago. And the only heat we actively have is in the floor. And I really hardly feel that as I'm walking around. There, right there. This uh, heat around right, it's the uh, Is it electric radiant floor no, heat? No, it's, or it's, it's uh, hot water. Hot water. Hot water? Okay. Uh, here's uh, probably a, a problem that is architecturally it looks really nice in the summer and you'll get some solar heat gain uh, when the sun's out. Uh, this is also the weakest link in the roof system for uh, trying to keep the, the heat down and in. Usually the hot air rises, goes to the highest part of the building. Uh, with it here, it's not so much, it could probably use a little bit of caulking, but not much. But the worst thing is the glass itself is only an R3 uh, at the most. And here uh, might be a place for what they call solar shades uh, that can be uh, brought up and back uh, at night or when it's cold uh, to help keep the heat from rising and just radiating right out through the glass. Um, it's, it's, it's a trade-off, you know, uh, on different things and what you prefer over uh, uh, the amount of heat that's lost through this area. Uh, she was complaining that it's it's a little cool in this area all the time. So part of that is this is given a little bit of a chimney effect, not quite because it's not open, but it, it is rising and then just slowly radiating through the glass uh, where you can see the thickness of the insulation and everything on the vaulted part, like up above this opening through here. That's probably the thickness of the insulation. It's probably an R30. So when you calculate this space out from the rest and it being the highest place that's probably where you're losing some. 